We've got some great speakers coming up, and that brings us to our next speaker who's going to share some incredible information focused on your infrastructure and things that you need to think about. Who do we have, ladies? Eddie Z is coming up. He is one of our sponsors with Easy Trading Computers, and Eddie Z is the founder of Easy Trading Computers, the industry leader in high-powered trading computers for traders of all markets. He was introduced to the trading pits at the age of five. Yep. Five years old. I know. (laughs) As his dad worked in the uh, New York Stock Exchange, he took Eddie Z to work in the pits. So he's been trading since he was a teenager and started on the floor of the New York Mercantile Exchange the very first Monday after he graduated high school. Well, he didn't waste any time. Not an overachiever <laughs> by any means, right, Eddie? Not at all. Not at all. Can you hear me okay, gang? <laughs> yes, yeah, we can. Yeah. So awesome. Eddie today is going to just go over with you, is your computer fast enough to trade with? Why it's important to trade with a fast computer? Finding out if your PC is good enough for trading, and then the features to focus on and ignore in a new computer. So, Eddie, you are mic'd up. Awesome. I'm going to grab uh, controls here. You guys right. can see my screen, hopefully. We should in just a moment. And you are good to go. Good. We are going to turn it over to you, sir. Awesome. Thank you, guys. That was uh, quite an introduction. <laughs> so uh, first off, I just want to say thanks and express a little gratitude here to Raleigh, Pat, Nikki, the whole gang at Westmark Trading for having me here at this event. I am extremely honored to be amongst such smart people. I'd also like to pay tribute to all the veterans, past, present, and, and even future, and all those who served our country in war or peace. I personally don't care what political party you belong to, what country you came from, or the color of your skin. The United States is still the greatest country in the world, and we have our veterans to thank for our freedoms. I, I just felt that was important to, uh, to make clear before I started. Uh, I'm very thankful to them. So I hope you guys are learning a lot so far because it certainly is an extremely confusing time when it comes to the market here with the pandemic and post-election. And considering everything going on, we are truly living in a new world. There are a lot more people trading the markets these days and a lot more people are trading from home. And today's presentation is about determining if your computer is fast enough to trade with. And more importantly, how to optimize your computer setup so you can be successful trading from home. All right, so here's what we're gonna talk about today. Uh, Oh, before we get started, gang, if you have questions, go ahead and type them into that question chat panel and my man, Raleigh, we're, we'll gather them all up and towards the end of the presentation, we'll go over as many as we can. Raleigh, you're good with that, right? Okay, so let's get started. Here's what we're going to cover. Sorry, good with that, Eddie. I heard you, buddy. Okay, (laughs) awesome. Here's what we're going to cover today. First, we're going to talk about the biggest trading computer misconception and what it means for your trading. Then I'm going to show you with a demonstration exactly how to determine if your computer is truly fast enough to trade with. And there is an exact formula for it. And then lastly, I'm going to give you a minimum technology requirements checklist so that you can be successful trading. Now, uh, everything presented in today's uh, webinar is discussed in detail in our complete guide to trading computers. Plus, that guide is also chock full of a whole lot more, more than we can cover today. And everybody here, everybody in this room today, will get a complimentary copy of this uh, guide over the course of the next few days. You'll get that in your uh, inbox. Let me just go ahead and turn my, my pointer on here. So I'm gonna send you this. Everything we go over today is covered in this, but uh, go ahead and pay attention as well. So what I like to do is just talk a little bit about the beginning for me, so just very quickly. Uh, I just want to talk about how I got started with trading computers. I'm going to 
bring you back in my time machine to about 1980. I was 11 years old and a friend of mine got this machine right here. It's called the Apple II. I don't know, I'm, I'm sure there's some group of people who may have never seen this machine in here. It just uh, goes to show how fast time goes. But back in those days, this was the very beginning of the personal computer world. So my buddy got this Apple II and he brings me over to his house to see it. And him and his older brother had set it up in this amazing fashion. They had actually connected it to a telephone and people were calling into the computer one by one on their from their computer to this computer one by one calling in from all over the world and leaving these long form text messages on it and this computer was scrolling these text messages across this black and white screen or black and green screen and what my buddy had set up was something called an electronic bulletin board and people could connect to this machine one by one and they could read messages and they can post messages in this case the messages were about comic books and this what was called used to be called an electronic bulletin board was really the predecessor of what we now call a website now for me at 11 years old, I thought this was absolutely the coolest thing in the world. So when I got home that evening, I immediately began a campaign to my parents to get me a computer for the holidays. But what showed up for me under my tree was not an Apple II. It was uh, this machine right here, something called a Commodore VIC-20. So I get this machine, I rip open the box, I set it up, I started trying to load programs, and with this computer, the way you loaded programs, it had a hard drive, but this, this was the hard drive right here. You see this cassette player? You know those things we used to listen to music on back in the 80s? Uh, this was the hard drive. And these old things would take 45 minutes to load a program. And most of the time, it didn't even load the program properly. And all you would get was error messages. And uh, when a program did load, this machine didn't do any of the things like my friend's computer did. And I was super disappointed. And when my folks went to bed that night, I got a screwdriver out of my dad's toolbox and I literally pried this machine open and tried to figure out what the hell was wrong with it. Why was it so underpowered? Why didn't it do what my friend's computer did? And that was the moment where my passion and my interest for making computers bigger, stronger, and faster really came from. That's when that passion was born for me. And I've really been a computer nerd ever since. Uh, now, very quickly, I just want to tell you a little bit about my Wall Street and trading experience. I was pretty fortunate. Uh, my father was a floor trader on the New York Mercantile Exchange. And ever since I can remember, my dad would bring me to work with him. I'm talking really young, like 10 or 11 years old. My dad would take me to work with him, and I always loved going there, going down there with him. It was in the World Trade Center, the old World Trade Center. The Merc was awesome. The energy was unbelievable men carrying on, men behaving badly. And I just always loved going. And as I got older and I'd go to work with him, like being like as a teenager, I started asking a lot of questions like, what's going on down here? How does this all work? And what my father did was sit me down and teach me how to draw point and figure charts with a pencil and graph paper. This was literally before people had, you know, handheld or laptop computers. And he explained to me that he would look for very specific patterns in these charts, and that's how he would make money trading. Again, I thought this was one of the coolest things in the world. And I knew at a very early age that that was where I wanted to be. So what I decided to do was work on that floor the minute after I graduated high school. In fact, like the day after I graduated, I started on the floor as a clerk on that exchange. And I worked every summer, every Christmas break, every spring break while I was in college, even through graduate school until finally when I graduated, I actually did not go down and work on the floor. I actually decided to become a stockbroker. Uh, and at that point, I became a stockbroker for 17 years from 1993 all the way till 2009. 
So career-wise, trading Wall Street is really all I've ever known. So uh, here's a funny story. So the first trading computer I ever built was when I finally got my Series 7 license in the early 90s. And I started at this firm and my firm had like this big boardroom and everybody, everybody were, was in like these two man cubicles and every broker, there was two of us in each cubicle, we had to share a single computer with the other guy in the cube. So I'm sitting in this cubicle and the guy next to me had been there for like four or five years. Uh, you know, you guys remember Wall Street at all. This was a little after the movie Wall Street. But we had these computers. They were color with black screens. They weren't these green and black screens. But I'm sitting next to this guy. He'd been there for four or five years. We're sharing this computer. And because he's been there so long, he's dominating 85% of, of the screen with his stock symbols. And because I was the rookie, I got like five spaces to put up five stock symbols. So as you can imagine, I was really frustrated. And I, what I did is I went into the branch manager's office and I said, look, I can do surgery on this computer. I can add another screen and then I'll be able to see more symbols. And he let me do it. And that was really my very first trading computer. And as my career as a stockbroker advanced, I was constantly building and upgrading these machines, making them bigger, stronger, faster, able to handle more and more monitors. And anytime new technology or new operating system came out, I was buying new equip equipment and building them bigger, stronger, faster. I was that guy with the multiple old school, remember these old school monitors? I was that guy in my office with multiple old school CRTs sitting on my desk. Now, it wasn't until about 2009 when uh, a broker buddy pointed me to a Google search of the term trading computers. And when I Googled this term, I looked at all the companies that were offering products this, in this area, and I was appalled at what I saw. I felt like traders, you know, folks like you and me were being taken advantage of in, ter in terms of their lack of knowledge. And look, I get it. I know traders. We just want a big, strong, fast machine, but we don't need to necessarily know what's going on under the hood. We just need to know that that machine's going to be fast and it's going to do everything it needs to do. So that's right in that point, right at that moment in time is when I made it my mission to educate traders on the technology in trader speak, in plain language that all traders can understand. And that's why we're here today. It's why I'm here today to educate you guys a little bit on the technology. So why are trading computers needed? So people ask me all the time, can I just go to Best Buy or to Costco, buy a computer off the shelf? And that's a, that's a really good question. But what it real, really boils down to is what I call the number one uh, trader's misconception. And what most traders don't understand, what most traders don't get, is that most traders don't realize the sheer quantity of data that's pouring into your machine at the same time. It's like a fire hose of real-time data that's flowing directly into your machine. Uh, let me give you an analogy so we can talk about this for a little bit. Um, think about it. Have you ever seen this? This before, think about when you go to Netflix or YouTube, you go to start a movie. Have you ever seen the little spinny circle? That's something called buffering. So what your computer is actually doing as it connects to Netflix or YouTube or some other service is it's taking in a giant stream of real-time data, a high-definition stream of data, and your computer's processor is turning that data into the gorgeous high-definition picture that we're all used to seeing these days. The machine is actually gathering all this data. It's putting it all together into an image before it shows it to you. The machine wants to make sure it has enough data to show you a perfect picture. And that's called buffering, buffering. But here's the problem when it comes to trading. 
we take in a very similar level of data, a very similar gigantic stream of data, similar to a high def definition movie. But we have no time to buffer that data. Your computer has to take all that data, turn it into charts and indicators in spot on real time. Your, proce your prices and your charts have to be spot on to the nanosecond. Because if your computer can't handle all that data coming in, a bottleneck will develop and what's displayed on your screen will be slightly stale, slightly old. It might just be a fraction of a second to several seconds old. And so the prices you're seeing on, this, on your screen and your indicators might be a fraction of a second to several seconds off. And when you put in an order to buy or to sell, you're going to get an order execution or an order fill that doesn't match up to what you expected. And this is something called slippage. Slippage. Imagine you put a market order in to buy Apple at $117.20. And by the time you get filled, you get a price of $117.90. And it's like, you're like, what? How'd that happen? That is what I call slippage, slippage, and it costs traders a bundle. Let me show you another example real fast here. Have you guys been watching CNBC lately? Uh, I'm not the biggest fan of CNBC, but once in a while I put it on. Everyone is working from home and using the internet. And have you noticed that when they have these panel discussions, there's this little delay from when somebody stops talking until the next guy speaks, or they wind up talking over each other sometimes? That's because of that little internet delay and voice over IP delay. It's a signal processing issue. As traders, we cannot have a signal processing issue in our market data. That's that time delay I'm talking about. And that's what can happen with your trading computer. And if it's not fast enough and powerful enough to take on all that real-time data and turn it into your charts and indi indicators in spot on real time, you're going to have an issue. You're going to have that slippage. And that's really the trader's biggest misconception, not realizing that we're taking in so much data. And so again, when you put a market order in and you get filled at, at a price you didn't expect, that is something called slippage. And if it's happened to you, you've probably done this, what this guy's doing. Have you ever yelled at your screen or cursed at your screen? That's what happens when your machine is not powerful enough. And, and it's frustrating. And you know what? I mean, it, there's probably some newer traders in here, probably some veteran traders. But I can tell you with over 33 years on Wall Street, if you get triggered psychologically while you're trading because of a bad execution, unfortunately, if you get triggered this way while you're trading, you tend to make a series of bad decisions in a row and it can cascade out of control. You trigger something called your fight or flight response and it, it winds up in this, uh, in this uh, menagerie of bad decision making. So the last thing you need is your computer giving you a hard time when you're trading. There's so many other things to think about. So your computer hardware really needs to be spot on. Okay, the point you've probably been waiting for, let's determine if your computer is fast enough to trade with. So the most important variable in determining if your computer is fast enough to trade with is your computer's processor, which is also known as the CPU, or it's also known, you might've heard it called a central processing unit. The processor is what takes in that giant fire hose, that giant stream of data, and turns it into charts, turns it into graphs, turns it into indicators, calculates your auto trading tools, like uh, I just saw in uh, you know the trader tunnel, um, Josh Martinez tunnel trader system. He's got some some custom indicators and things in there. If you have any type of custom programming that's automatically generating your buy and your sell orders, the processor is what does all of that work. And that processor is the engine of the computer. 
So to figure out this formula of what makes a lightning fast trading computer, the most important variable in that formula is going to be the processor. The processor is the engine of the computer. And here's how we find out what processor you have. Here's how we're going to find out exactly what processor is in your current machine. By the way, feel free to figure this out while you're watching the webinar. If I go a little too fast or you're really not follow, uh, following, I promise all of this is explained in, explained in the Complete Guide to Trading P Computers, which all of you are going to get a copy of over the course of the next uh, few days here. Okay, so let me just... Uh, pull up a browser here. I'm going to put up this browser right here. All right. So here's what you're going to do in Windows 10. You're going to click the start button right over here, down here, click start, but just click start and start typing system information. Now you notice I didn't even type the full term and it's already showing up right here. You want to go ahead and open, click on that and it'll open a box that looks something like this. Now, if you're using Windows 7 or Windows 8, it's a little bit different. You're going to click the start button and it's going to be a little search box right above the start button and you can type the words system information in there and it'll also uh, just like when I did it here, after you start typing in that search box, see the search box open by itself, this little, uh, this will pre-populate. You can just click on it and it will open this window right here. Okay. So essentially this screen, this information screen is built in to Windows 10. And what we want to do is go down to about the 10th line right here. This line states your processor. Now, in my case, my processor is called the Intel Core i7-4790K. Intel Core i7-4790K at four gigahertz. What I want you to do is go ahead and open that window yourself and go ahead and jot that down all it's very important that you get all the letters and numbers in the processor very important i'll show you why in a second so yours might not say intel it might say amd it might say intel xeon it might say uh intel pentium with some numbers um but get as much information as you can from there and then the next part, the next thing I want you to do, so we, you, here you're going to know your processor, but we're going to, I want to grab another piece of information. It's about the 27th line down. It's under time zone is your installed physical memory, also known as your RAM. And in my case, I have 16 gigs of RAM. So go ahead and, uh, and write this down. So the next thing, obviously, what we want to know is if this processor is fast enough for trading. So you've written that stuff down. And what I want to do is take you to a website. This website is CPU Benchmark, CPU Benchmark dot net. CPUbenchmark.net. So you're going to open this website here. I'm going to try to open this website here. <laughs> Why is it taking so long? That is very unusual. Well, Perhaps the website is down, which is uh, not what I expected today. <laughs> well, um, I guess uh, we'll have to come back to it. So what, what this website is, what this website is, let me try um, one other thing here. So I can get one of the other pages to load.
I guess this website is down. I've never seen it. Oh, here we go. Thank you. All right. So let me go back to the home screen. It's back up. Okay, so what this website is, is an independent company that has developed something called benchmarking software. And people from all over the world have already downloaded and run this software on their computer. So don't, don't click on anything yet. Essentially, what the software does is it forces your computer to run a whole series of formulas and algorithms and force the computer to come up with the solutions to those algorithms and then measure how fast it can come up with these solutions. Now, the nice part about this website is we don't have to run the software at all because literally a million people have already run the software. What we can do is just access their database. So we're just going to access their database. So um, the analogy I like to use uh, here with this, what, what we're going to do is we're going to access their database. So go ahead and click this search CB, CPU. You search for your CPU right here. Nice to see that it's working. So we're going to pull up something called the benchmark score. And I like to use the analogy of a car engine. Your processor is the engine of the computer. And the more horsepower an engine has in a car, the faster it is. So this thing we call the benchmark score is actually how much horsepower your computer has. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to enter my computer's horsepower. You guys saw me uh, pull it up. It's the i7-4790K processor. Whoops, I added a digit there. I'm going to go ahead and then click Find CPU. Now, the first thing I want to mention to you, it's very important that you get in there all the letters and all the numbers. Because if you look right above here, here's my CPU. This is the Intel Core i7-4790 with no K at the end. And its benchmark score, 7,218, is like 10% lower than my processor's benchmark score. And it's only one letter difference. So it's really important that you write down uh, all the letters and numbers. Now, in my case, my benchmark score is 8,064. Now, obviously, you guys probably don't know what that means yet. So here it is. The minimum benchmark score for trading is 12,000. So, uh-oh, this machine is not fast enough for trading. As it turns out, this is just a machine I use to do webinars on. I do not trade on this machine. But the main thing I want you to realize is that the lower this benchmark score, the lower below 12,000 it is, the higher risk you are of that thing we call slippage. If your, process, if your processor's benchmark score is below 12,000, you have a high risk of slippage. The lower the number, obviously, the higher the risk. Uh, and it, again, slippage means your data could potentially be slightly old, slightly stale, and it could lead to, to some unexpected trades. Now, the farther above 12,000 you are, the more useful life you will have from your machine and the more time you have before obsolescence. Uh, there's actually some new high-end processors out there that benchmark over 50,000. And a machine like that should give you at least five years before obsolescence. So that is your computer's benchmark score. Again, we want this to be over 12,000. It's the most important variable in the formula. It's the engine of the computer. It's doing most of the work. Now, the next uh, biggest variable, let's go back to Google. The next biggest variable in this formula of a what makes a lightning fast trading computer is going to be your internet speed. So the quickest way, easiest way to check your internet speed is to go to a website called speedtest, one word, dot net. Go ahead and go to speedtest.net. 
Now, uh, in my case, I happen to have some ad blocking software running. Sometimes this page loads up with a bunch of advertising on it. Just ignore that. What we want to do is go ahead and click this big go button. And when we click this big go button, we're going to get three data points. The first data point is going it's going to give us is this number here. It's called ping, ping. Now the ping is your modem sending a signal to your closest major node or your closest major transfer point. It's like the largest closest major server that your provider is giving you and getting an echo back. And we want that ping to be less than 50 milliseconds. I'm at three milliseconds here, so I'm in pretty good shape. Think of when you're making a phone call the ping is how fast someone on the other end answers the phone and says hello. So it's not actually having that conversation back and forth. It's just that, for, that very first point of contact. And again, we want to see it below 50 milliseconds. Anything above 50 milliseconds, and it's going to create some latency. It's going to and may result in slippage. So just be aware of that. The next mo most important figure is your download speed right here. You want your download speed to be at least 25 megabits per second. Now, fortunately for me, mine is over 900. I pay for a, a gigabyte, so or a gigabit it's called. Uh, so I'm in pretty good shape here. And then lastly, you want your upload speed to be at least five megabits per second. Now, the more the better period the more the better period look if you can upgrade from 50 megabits per second to a gig per second for 40 dollars a month do it i mean that's it we're traders this is a a profession we want every single tool anything that can give us any boost in speed is going to help us be more successful so don't don't cheap out on your internet connection okay really really important so that is your internet speed and that is your second most important piece so uh, here's a quick trading computer checklist to go over um, let's just go over these we already talked about these again you want your benchmark score to be at least 12,000 or higher the higher the better uh, 12,000 is really like the bare bare minimum you want your internet speed you want your ping to be less than 50 milliseconds. The lower, the better. Anything over 50, you're going to have some latency. Download speed greater than 25 megabits per second. And your upload speed better than 5 megabits per second. Excuse me. Let's talk about the RAM real fast or your random access memory. So we want a minimum, an absolute minimum of 16 gigs of memory these days. Now, if you're a trader like me, this particular variable in the formula didn't used to be so heavily weighted. But as time has gone on, computers have become a lot more powerful. The software has become more powerful. So if, for example, if you're running Thinkorswim or Tastyworks or TradeStation or Ninja Trader, and I have clients who are running three or four different trading apps at the same time. The more things you're running at the same time, the more RAM you need. And I've noticed as time has gone on, we're opening more and more programs at the same time. So if you're running Zoom, like we are right now, that can be pretty RAM intensive, resource intensive. And if you're in a trading room using Zoom, or go to webinar or any of these other resource hogs plus at the same time you're running two or three other trading applications it's going to use a lot of memory so you want to make sure you have enough ram and if you use up all of the ram that's in your system your computer is going to start writing that data to the hard drive and your whole machine is going to bog down and that can be a huge issue so 16 gigabytes minimum uh, I would probably recommend at this point at least uh, 32 gigs if you're using any kind of uh, custom indicators for example what uh, traders agency what Josh was showing 
is a good example. It looks like it does some level of auto trading there. Any extra RAM, and if you're running multiple platforms, it's going to help you. All right. So uh, that's, that's really how you determine if you have a computer fast enough for trading. So I have a very special offer for you guys um, because you guys came out to this live event. What I'm about to show you is not available on my publicly facing website. This is a special offer just for Westmark for this uh, particular event, um, presidential profits. So what you want to do is go to westmarktrading.com forward slash easy. I'll go ahead and open that right here. I hope my website loads up quickly. And it does. So we have a very special deal for you guys. I actually put two deals together for you guys. And uh, just this is going to end Sunday at 5 p.m. Eastern time. Is that right? Yeah, Sunday, 5 p.m. Eastern time. I got two deals for you guys. The first deal is something we call our Super Trader GT Mega Display Package. There's a video here. You can watch this at your leisure. But just very quickly, this is Intel's latest i7 technology. This computer comes with the Intel Core i7 uh, 10700. This is an eight core. Benchmark score is 17,750. Um, now, the, the thing about this computer is that it comes with the military-grade motherboard. Why is that important, a military-grade motherboard? So the two things that kill electronics are heat and vibration. And unless you live in California, vibration is not really going to be a big deal. But heat in electronics kills, kills it over time. We warranty these machines for five years, and no one else does that. So we use the very best components we possibly can. ASUS has this military-grade motherboard, so we're going to use that in our machines. Um, this, also, this machine is also already upgraded to 32 gigs of RAM for you. Uh, it includes something called a solid-state hard drive, a solid-state hard drive. So. Back in the days, like even just three or four years ago, if you went down to, uh, the, the, to Best Buy, you bought a laptop or a desktop, it just had a regular rolled spinning disk hard drive. And that technology is like 35, 40 years old. The problem with that type of old school technology, if you're still running on a machine that's a little bit old, is that inside of that hard drive is like a, a spinning disk and there's a little stylus that reads and writes data. It has moving parts. And over time, those moving parts wear out. It's the first thing that can go on a computer. The newest computers come with something called a solid state hard drive, essentially flash memory chips. So think about your, your Android, your latest Android or your latest iPhone. How many times have you dropped that thing? <laughs> I know I drop mine all the time. Miraculously, that thing never stops working. That's because it has flash memory chips built into it. It doesn't have any moving parts. So it's really important to have the solid state hard drive built into your desktop or your laptop. That technology is, is almost almost bulletproof. It's really a solid technology. It all it lasts a lot longer, can take a lot more heat, and it's like 50 times faster than those old hard drive. Uh, so this machine comes with six monitor support, which means that you can plug in up to six monitors if you wanted this, this wall of monitors we show here. Uh, or you can get it without the monitors. We also have a four monitor package for you guys as well. Uh, just to, like I mentioned before, all of our machines come with five-year warranty. They also come with lifetime technical support. As long as you're using that machine, you can call into our support desk. These are my guys. They're uh, based here in the United States. They only deal with traders like you guys, and we know these machines inside and out. It's not like buying a Dell or an HP and you call tech support. 
and who knows where what part of the planet you get routed to and there's somebody on the other end who who might speak english but a little differently than the way you and i do we're going to help you uh for the lifetime in the machine uh secondly so there's a quick description of what's going on here we also have another deal for you guys a laptop that also benchmarks over that 12,000 benchmarks at 13,000. This is Intel's new six core i7 10750H processor. This machine also has a solid state hard drive, comes with 16 gigs of RAM. Um, we even have some cool travel monitors and lots of bonuses, bonus products that go with both the desktop and the laptop. Go ahead and peruse that page at your leisure. Uh, this video here talks about all the bonuses that are included. We even have a deal with TradeStation. I don't work for TradeStation, but we do have a deal with TradeStation where if you open a new account with them, you tell them you bought an easy trading computer, you trade options or you trade futures, they're going to offer you a 20% rebate in commissions you pay until the entire cost of your easy trading computer is paid for. Additionally, we have financing. We have three different financing options. We have uh, PayPal, which is probably the least popular. PayPal offers six months interest free, but uh, they don't approve a lot of people. We also have a company called uh, Bread Financing who approves a lot of people and you can pay over 24 months. And then lastly, we have a lease to own option um, called Progressive who will give credit to almost everybody as long as you have a telephone and a bank account and you're breathing they will give you credit it's not the greatest deal in the world but what they do offer is three months with no interest so as you pay it off in three months it's a great deal if you go past the three months the interest rates really high so um, if you want to keep some money in your trading account for a couple months and your credit's not great that's a good option. So uh, that's a very special offer we have for you guys here. Again, you want to go to westmarktrading.com forward slash EZ to take advantage of that offer. And as I mentioned to you guys before, if I went over things a little fast for you, you're a little confused, everybody here today is going to get a copy of that guide called the complete guide to trading computers keep an eye out in your inbox for that over the course of the next few days my man raleigh what's hey up? eddie <laughs> <laughs> hi there brother that was a great presentation <clears throat> thank you i'm glad i uh, i did a test on my system and i'm barely over the threshold so i think i can breathe uh -oh. a little bit <laughs> <laughs> good good to hear but there were several questions that came in, and, and uh, let me start feeding some of those to you. Yeah, there are absolutely. folks out there that use an Apple computer, and you didn't talk about Apple at all. Can, can traders use an Apple or a Mac? What are, what are your thoughts there? Yeah, I get this question maybe two, three times a week. And so, obviously, Apple... Apple products are very, very popular. Their Macs are very popular. The iPhone's very popular. And I get it. They have a really nice operating system. It's very intuitive to use. And it tends to be very stable. Uh, sometimes there are people out there who feel it's more stable than the Windows environment, which probably was true a few years ago, but I, I don't think it's true anymore. But here's the thing. And you can thank our buddy Steve Jobs Steve Jobs and Tim Cook for this. Apple, over the years, their strategy has been to control all the hardware and all the software. That's right. They never really reveal their, soft, their source code of their OS to allow software uh, manufacturers to design software for Apple. And that's why you don't see Ninja running on Apple. You don't see TradeStation running on an Apple. For many of the brokers, the only way you can access them uh, if you have an Apple is to use some web-based application, and most of them are pretty slow and clunky. So what people do, there are people out there who try to install Windows on their Apple computer. Problem is it's a little bit of a hack. So there's two ways to do it. One's called Boot Camp. The other's called Parallels. 
And the problem is, is that once you load up these versions of Windows uh, and then install your trading application, uh, it uses up almost all the resources on that computer and the computer really bogs down. Hmm. Excuse me a sec. It can turn all your real time. It can't really take all, once you use up all your resources, it can't take, let, take that fire hose of real time data and turn it into charts and indicators in real time. The bottom line is it, it really just doesn't work. So we have Steve Jobs really to thank for that. Uh, unfortunately, that, uh, that's just how it is. That's so, just how it is. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there are folks out there. I know we have customers. They just get a PC for trading. And then they use Apple for all their browsing, all their email, Facebook, and, uh, and all the rest of that stuff. The funny thing about Apple, Raleigh, uh, and their equipment is relative to the amount of per uh, processing power you get. Uh, that it, it's do, it, it doesn't give you the best. A lot of like the, the, the lower priced Apple machines, the benchmark scores aren't really that high. You have to really buy like a $3,000 Apple to get a benchmark score that would match up for what we need for trading. Then you have to load up uh, one of these uh, boot camp or parallels just to try to make it work. And it just doesn't work. That's what it we just found. Doesn't work. Okay, good. That great answer. And it was a super question there. So folks, you know, at the end of the day, if there's a web based application, you have a shot. But outside of that, Apple products are going to be tough when you're trying to trade in this highly competitive world we're in. Uh, another question, we have a lot of people here from all over the world outside the United States. And so the question came up, do you guys ship internationally? And how do you deal with different voltages and stuff? Eddie, do you have solutions for our international traders? Yes, absolutely. We ship all over the world. Uh, this key thing to know if you're outside the United States, in the United States, by the way, shipping is free, continental United States. Shipping okay. is free. We include everything. Um, but if you're outside the U.S., just know what your country's import duties or taxes are. So, for example, we ship to Europe a lot. And in many countries there, they charge that value added tax. And so if we ship it via FedEx, FedEx is going to hold that machine for ransom until they collect that value added tax. Uh, we ship all, we ship a lot to Canada, Australia. Um, we've shipped to uh, Eastern Europe. We've shipped to Africa, South Africa, Kenya, Nigeria. Just know what your country's duties are ahead of time. It's out of our control. Um, when we export, we don't charge any taxes on our end. It's all going to be based on, in, on the country that you're living in. Okay. And then on the voltage thing. So in North America, much of South America, we're running, I think, at 110 volts 110 to 120 volts. And the vast majority of the world is like at 240 volts. But fortunately, over the last few years, the power supplies in the desktops and the laptops automatically detect the voltage. It didn't used to be that oh. way even just 10 years ago. So we had to be super careful. <laughs> and in the beginning, we made a few mistakes and we shipped machines with the wrong power supplies. So that's no longer an issue for us. Okay. Um, you just want to make sure like when we, uh, if we're shipping a machine to Europe, the tip of the, of the plug that goes in the socket is going to be a little bit different because we're going to ship it with the USA version. That's something you can usually pick up for five bucks or five euros, you know, close by to your house just to plug, plug the thing into the wall. Okay. All right, quick way, and, and when it's on the voltages, it's swish, and also the cycles from 50 to 60, those are all kind of together. Oh, yep, yep, that's all auto-detected, and you won't have a problem at all, no matter okay. where you are. There were, um, one of the things that people are aware of is that you can have the best machine in the world, but if your internet's kind of sketchy, you know, where are you? So from that standpoint, you know, what affects the speeds that you get in your house, and can you, can you just talk about uh, internet connections sort of a little bit in general? Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a really good question. You guys just saw I'm running at a full, almost a full gigabyte download speed. And in many parts of the country these days, lots of folks now have better and better internet speeds. But 
it's really just subject to whatever neighborhood you're in. Um, in rural areas, a lot of rural er areas, there you don't get the greatest internet speed and you might be subject to running on satellite or even just DSL and, and they can be on the slow side. Satellite, obviously you're gonna have some weather issues. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that is probably gonna be a big help for a lot of folks is when 5G is really out there. I know there's a lot of skepticism around 5G. It's gonna fry our brains or not, but 5G really is a big, big boost in internet speed. And it might, it might over, I would, I'm projecting not n next year or the year after, but maybe three to five years from now, it's really gonna change how we get internet access because we might be in a world of internet everywhere all the time, high speed. Uh, and we might actually turn into the Borg at some point. <laughs> but uh, um, I think it's important to realize if you have internet, you're trading from home, you're trading big positions, it might be a good idea to have a backup. So I just showed you my internet connection on speedtest.net. I have AT&T fiber coming into the house here, but I also have Xfinity as a backup. And as traders, we need to consider having a backup internet connection. So if you have access to another provider, if you're using Uverse or AT&T and you have access to Xfinity, or uh, if you happen to have the ability to get two different providers, even though it might be a little expensive, as a professional trader, it's a good idea because trading blind can be, um, it can be a big problem. Um, it, it, you know, sometimes people try to tether to their cell phone as a backup for internet. And in my neighborhood, I can't get a cell phone signal. Even though I'm in South Florida, I'm in Fort Lauderdale, and I have two strong oh. inter internet connections, my, I can't use my phone as a backup for whatever reason, there's no signal. So when, I mean, my cell phone connects to Wi-Fi when I'm, when I'm here in the house. Sure. Also uh, lightning strikes. So uh, I've had lightning take out both of my internet connections over the years. So again, it's also nice to have a backup. Lightning strikes and power surges can take out splitters on the outside of your house. Um, I once had a lightning strike. I had a guy up in the attic changing out every splitter before he could get a consistent internet signal. So backup systems are a really important part of trading. And in that guide, which I'm going to send you over the next uh, couple of days, I have a whole detailed section on different, different backup systems that are important for traders. Well, that's so, great. Uh, and I... And yeah, I tell ahead. you, Eddie, we're coming up to the top of the hour here, and I almost hate to cut you off because there's so many questions that have come in, and I know people can follow up directly with you, but thank you so much for a tremendous presentation. Thank I mean, you guys so much, uh, Pat, Nikki, Raleigh, uh, mm -hmm. the whole gang. You guys are great. All the well, best, you guys. Well, thank you, Eddie. And, and once and again, in and around all the education that you're going to be getting over the course of the next couple of days, with a lot of focus on strategies and techniques and tips for trading the markets, we thought it would be excellent just to take a break from that and talk about some of the core tools that we need, regardless of the strategies that we're going to be using. And that's why we were delighted to have Eddie here come and talk about the computer platform, the interfaces, the networks, etc., that make everything work for us as traders from home. So. Once again, Eddie Z with uh, Easy Computers, um, uh, and here's his special there, the Easy Desktop Solution. Deal one is for the desktop system, deal two for the, for the laptop, and as I mentioned, there's free shipping in the U.S., lifetime tech support, and financing terms, and you can go there to westmarktrading.com slash EZ, and, uh, and, that will get you, uh, and that will get you there. So... At this point in time, we are coming up to quiz. All right. It's quiz time. And it's a good time for a quiz, don't you think? It's the top of the hour. People are sitting there waiting, going like, what's so what's happened? What do I have to do to earn a $100 gift card? 
You're doing this one to me. Well, to earn the gift mm-hmm. card, you have to answer the quiz correctly. The first correct person can place that in either Q&A or chat. Our moderators will let us know who answered correctly first. So, Raleigh, what is our quiz question? Oops. Ah, uh, you're trying to catch <laughs> me. <and> you it. <laughs> there you go. I'm playing with you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Which president is known as the father of the Constitution? We do have a winner. All right. And I'm going to reset the music here. That is Kevin Diego. Kevin, let our moderators have your email address so we can send that Amazon gift card. And what's the answer, Raleigh? The answer to that question is... James Madison drafted and heavily promoted the Constitution. Yeah, and, and for those guys that are interested in this, I mean, I, I researched all these questions and the quizzes. There's a heck of a backstory behind the Constitution and the back and forth on its drafting, et cetera. And it's a great read. But James Madison is the man as far as the Constitution is concerned. Well, by the end of this, we won't just have great, you know, trading knowledge. We're going to all get a, you know. <laughs> History, we're going to have <laughs> history lesson by the end. We're going to have presidential trivia knowledge that will win us many bar bets. That's for sure. That's right. That's <laughs> right. More useless information in my. <laughs>